So welcome back to some more Grand Theft Auto Vice City. In this part, we will be completing the mission Death Row from Kent Paul. But before we begin, I want to show off the spawn location of a helicopter that we can get our hands on at this point in the game. And it's located in the northern area of the giant island on the left side of Vice City. Now the reason for pointing out this spawn location is because it makes this mission just a bit easier to complete and the next mission super easy to complete by having your hands on a helicopter for both of these missions. And we will see that play out in this part and the next part, so that's all fine and dandy stuff. But what isn't fine and dandy is that the helicopter didn't spawn in on my first visit to that rooftop on top of the building that has the entrance. So what you can do in these older Grand Theft Auto games in a situation where a vehicle doesn't spawn at one of its set spawn locations is to just drive away and then come back to it. Now something to keep in mind is that you'll have to drive a decent distance away from the spawn location before coming back to it and it also might not work every time so you have to rinse and repeat the process. All right, Mush. I'm gonna save your Vera, mate. What the hell are you talking about? You know that wanker there is the Bugelmeister? He's got your boy Lance. Word is you might try to jump. You didn't jump high enough if you know what I mean. Where did he ah, take him? Ah! Oh, hey, all In right, plain mate. English. Keep your party on. They got him across town to the junkyard. Bloody hell, you nutter! So normally I'd say that Tommy goes a bit overboard with his physical handlings of Kent Paul during their encounters over the course of this game, which I'm not against or anything, they're quite funny to see when they happen. But in a situation like this, which is a life or death situation for Lance, it is incredibly justified that Tommy roughs up Kent Paul a little bit. And even when us common folk find ourselves in situations that are very high octane, such as trying to find your lost car keys, or maybe there's a box of Cheez-Its that suddenly went missing in the pantry, you know, things like that, it is a bit annoying whenever you have somebody in these situations that's holding information from you, and they begin speaking poetically, or maybe they fancy up their vocabulary or something like that. I mean, it is annoying, and I can kind of understand where Tommy's coming from, although I wouldn't physically harm somebody for stealing my squeegee or something, but you get the idea. Anyways, the reason for having this helicopter is because we can avoid going through the front gate by just simply landing next to the warehouse where Lance is being held. And it's very important to land your helicopter at this particular spot, or else it will despawn after you get to Lance. Now, once you land the helicopter, you want to quickly get to Lance by shooting these fellas right here, or else you're going to have a lot of other enemies to deal with and a lot of other D of Diaz's men to deal with, and that's not a good thing because Lance is very weak right now. There goes my careful planning blown to shit. Thanks to you. You screwed up real good, Lance. You killed my brother. What do you expect me to do, mow his lawns? We're going to have to take out that prick Diaz before he takes us out. You okay to use a gun? Sure, I guess. Nice to see you too. Let's get out of here. So this part of the mission is very important because what you want to do is run on over to that little uh, construction vehicle thing. So that way Lance gets out of the uh, warehouse facility at a pretty decent distance because he can get stuck on walls very easily. So the way of maneuvering through that little area to the helicopter is very important because Lance is not very cooperative when it comes to reacting to walls and running away from them and stuff. He'll just kind of keep running towards them for whatever reason. So movement's very key there. So if you follow my movement, you should be fine in terms of getting Lance the hell out of that warehouse. And you may have noticed that there was only like one guy outside of the warehouse waiting for us. And that's because we were very quick at getting from the helicopter to the warehouse that had Lance because if you take your time the people at the front of the gate that we avoided going through will then run on over towards where Tommy and Lance are and that can cause problems because Lance is obviously not in the best condition so he's gonna die very easily to a few shots get patched up and meet me on the bridge of Star Island okay okay I got you No oh, man, fecal matter's going down now. And you may notice that we don't get any monetary reward for this, and that's because Diaz's men back at that lot area have a lot of money once you kill them, so that kind of compensates um, for not getting money as a reward for completing this mission, because you can just pick up the money from the dead men's uh, bodies, I suppose, as well as their ammo. Tommy, Tomás, it's Cortez. Look, the French are giving me all kinds of trouble, amigo. Them hypocrites. They spend a hundred years stealing from poor countries, and they call me a thief. Huh? <laughs> I'm going to need your help as soon as possible, amigo. 
So please hurry. Uh, Tommy, I need you, all right? I hate the damn French. Yes, yes, from the words of Jeff Daniels' character from the movie Dumb and Dumber, released in 1994. The French are assholes, and apparently Cortez has that same sentiment of the fictitious character that I'm quoting. And because of this apparent popular opinion of the French, it makes me question how great of a person Eva Green really is. And that makes me sad if she does turn out to be a big ol' meanie. So, anyways, though, that completes this part. In the next part, things are getting hot and heavy for us, because we're going to be doing the mission rub out from Lance Vance Dance. So, until then, I'll see you next time.